Welcome to this short demo of UiPath Orchestrator, the 2020.10 release. If you're new to Orchestrator, here's the 30 second summary. It's the enterprise scale manager for your entire robot workforce. It lets you license, deploy, and manage robots across the organization. You can also manage the life cycle of the automations those robots run across the enterprise, from making them available to groups of users, to remotely scheduling and triggering them as jobs on unattended robots. And importantly, Orchestrator centrally logs and monitors every aspect of what every robot is doing, whether for technical debugging or business policy compliance purposes. The 2020.10 release adds many new features. We'll focus on three of them today while giving a super quick summary of Orchestrator capability. You'll see a completely new user experience, support for personal workspace management, and enhancements to modern folders, which are now the default folder type. In Orchestrator, management boundaries are set by tenants. In the new UX, we've separated tenant management out cleanly from folder management. So when you click on tenants, you see all the actions you can manage at a tenant level in this menu bar. You have a summary of all the robots, both attended and unattended in your organization, you have folders, which we'll look at in more detail shortly. You have users and groups. On premises, these can be optionally synchronized from your Active Directory. That same capability is coming to the Automation Cloud for Azure AD shortly, but today you have custom groups and multiple user authentication options in the cloud. Orchestrator has very granular RBAC permissions at both the folder and the tenant level, and roles make those easy to manage by, well, rolling them up into common or custom combinations. You have machines that robots run on for each tenant, and you also have a packages feed where developers publish new automations that they wrote in Studio that you're going to use Orchestrator to deploy and manage as processes. Orchestrator automatically versions packages, and in 20.10, we add the option to have folder level package feeds as well as this tenant level feed. You can manage your machine learning skills for AI Fabric, and you can audit every action taken in Orchestrator. We have here support for enterprise credential stores, either the encrypted Orchestrator database, Azure Key Vault in the Automation Cloud, or CyberArk on-prem and very shortly in the cloud as well. You can add webhooks, and you can manage your licenses for all of your UiPath products here for the whole organization. Automations and robots can generate alerts for both technical and custom business process issues. You see those here. And finally, you have all the settings you can change at the tenant level. Moving on, hierarchical modern folders are the key way you manage automations at enterprise scale in Orchestrator. They contain various entities, which we'll see in a moment, and have an inherited user permission structure. The power of modern folders is that if you give a user, a group, or a machine appropriate permissions on a folder, they can use all the entities in that folder. Better still, those entities can include processes. Processes are just specific versions of automation packages. And that's really powerful because any user or group that has the rights to run automations in a specific folder will automatically see all the processes they have access to in the UI Path Assistant. If that sounded complicated, it's actually simple. Let's see it in action. My user Jeff works in the call center, and along with all his call center colleagues, he has automation user rights on two folders, the EMEA folder and the call center employees folder. And as you see, each of those folders has one process in it. EMEA has an employee time off process, Call Center employees has a daily report creation process. Now remember, a process is just a specific version of an automation package you want to deploy. So if we look at Jeff's UiPath Assistant, you see that because he has appropriate permissions on those modern folders, here on his desktop, he has access to the employee time off and daily report creation process ready to run whenever he needs them. But what if we want to give everyone in the call center a new automation to summarize call statistics, which a developer just conveniently uploaded as a package in our tenant? Easy. We go to the modern folder for call center employees. We use this really cool new shortcut menu in the new UX to create 
a new process. We select the package. We'll give the process a name, real-time call metrics. Hit create. And that's it. We have a new process in the modern folder, which means that if we look at Jeff's UI path assistant, he can now run the new automation that's just appeared. And actually, it's not the most useful automation ever, but the point is it was easy to deliver. And if the call center was a group and Jeff was a member of it, the hundred people in that group would have access to it now, or a thousand, whatever. This is how Orchestrator lets you deliver automations at enterprise scale. And yes, if we remove that new process from the folder, or if we remove Jeff from the call center group and he doesn't have permissions anymore, he loses access to that application. Need proof? There you go. You can do similar things with running folder processes on unattended robots, except you use triggers to create the jobs that will run the processes based on time or items being added to a queue. And you can see the logs for all actions, attended or unattended, taken on entities in the folder. You can also do real-time monitoring of everything happening across the enterprise on processes, machines, or queues in that modern folder. And folders can contain other entities like assets, uh, credentials or data, which are securely stored, and storage buckets that are a recent feature that allow your automations to integrate with different types of external storage solutions. And since I glossed over my favorite new UX feature, the shortcut bar, yes, you can use it to walk back up the modern folder tree. Yes, we did add the ability to move modern folders around easily in 2020.10, and we put it here on the shortcut bar. And yes, of course it changes, depending on whether you're working with the folder settings or the tenant settings. Another new feature in Orchestrator 2020.10 is support for personal workspaces. To remind you what a personal workspace is, let's take a look at the UI path assistant of my colleague, Asha, who also works in the call center. She has the same automations that everyone in the call center gets, as you can see, but she has something else, Studio X. That's because Asha is a citizen developer and she's in charge of scheduling and she's written a little automation that only she will use to help her with that. So when she hits publish, she's actually gonna publish it to her personal workspace feed that sends it up to Orchestrator. Orchestrator creates a process automatically and sends it down to her UiPath assistant. She can only publish to herself, no one else. Uh, but it does mean that she very shortly will have the automation there. There it is. Uh, she can download it, uh, get it installed, and she doesn't need Studio anymore. Whenever she needs that weekly scheduling app, she can just run it. Just need to load it the first time there. Uh, she runs it, and away it goes. And of course, we can help manage that in Orchestrator. Let's see how. The first investment that we made in personal workspace support in the 2020-10 release is for administrators. You can see a list as an administrator of every personal workspace in the organization. You can search for them. You can see a summary of usage for any given workspace. And you can also, if you need to, go and actually explore any individual workspace. Doing that gives you a monitoring summary like this one. It also gives you access to the automations, the processes, uh, the jobs that have been created and run, the packages uh, that have been uploaded. Fun fact, packages can't be deleted. They can be versioned and updated, and they don't have to be processes, uh, but they can't be deleted for compliance purposes, of course. Uh, and you can also see logs, you can see queues, you can see assets or storage buckets uh, that Asha may have created. If someone does something really useful uh, in a personal workspace that you want to more broadly deploy, you do have the option to convert it to a modern folder as an administrator as well, which is pretty cool. But the second big investment is for users. There's now a personal workspace login view in Orchestrator, which is a default 
that you get if you're a user and you've been configured that way during setup. And so Asha can actually log into Orchestrator herself. She can work with her processes, maybe change the name. Uh, she can see jobs. She can see the packages she's uploaded. She can create queues, assets, storage buckets, uh, and with some extra permissions, she can also get alerts. So that's really good functionality for citizen developers. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this short demo. If you have more questions, please come and see us at Expertsville or check us out uh, uipath.com forward slash orchestrator. Thanks. Have a fantastic day.